Hello, this is CS11, Lecture 9, Loops Part 2. Today we'll be taking a look at the FOR command. Previously, we took a look at the WHILE loop, and I described the standard construction of a WHILE loop, which is the word WHILE and your condition and set of curly braces to enclose the commands that you want to repeat. And then towards the bottom of the loop, some sort of increment, and then typically some kind of initialization before you enter the while loop. Because that's such a standard construction, there's another command called a for that includes all three of those pieces as part of the command. And the for looks like this. The initialization, condition, and increment all come inside of the parentheses and are joined by semicolons. For example, for int i equals 0, i is less than 10, i plus plus. Here is the initialization. That will happen once and only once and exactly once just as you're entering the loop for the first time. Perform the test and if it's true then you execute any commands that are inside here and then you execute the increment. Then you do the test again. Just like a while loop if the test is false you fall out of the loop and then continue on executing afterwards. If the condition is true and you execute all of the instructions in here again and then perform the increment. Now, you might be looking at these two commands and wondering why are there two commands in C++ that basically do the same thing? And the answer is that computer languages evolve a little bit over time and sometimes have some duplication of features. And in fact, I would say that almost all programming languages have good and bad features. Now, for and while, the fact that there's this duplication of features is fine. You find that many programming languages um, have those too. But C++ does have some bad features, by the way. Some of them I mentioned previously. For example, cn.fail and cn.ignore that I'd like you to not use. And there are other commands that I would like you to not use. Break, continue and go to. So now it turns out there are actually two kinds of loops and since there are two types of looping commands I have a natural preference to use one for each of those two types. One type of loop is called sentinel controlled repetition And in sentinel controlled repetition, you repeat until something happens. The other type of loop is called counter controlled repetition. And in counter controlled repetition, you count from one thing to another. If you use counter controlled repetition, when you look at a program, you can often see exactly how many times the loop is going to execute. Whereas with sentinel controlled repetition, you don't know that. Since there are two types of loops and two loop commands, I use while when I'm doing sentinel controlled repetition and for when I'm doing counter controlled repetition. All right, let's write a sample program that uses the for command. Create a string variable called name and we'll prompt the user to input their name. Hello. What is your name? We're just going to get a single word, so why don't we use CN? All right, let's test our program, and then we can add a loop to it. program is called Lecture 9. All right, what I would like to do is have the user type in their name, and I would want to print their name back out 
but with a dash in between each letter. Why would we want to do that? I don't know. It's a puzzle. All right. It's good practice. So that's what's input. This is what I want to print out. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, this is going to be repetitive operation. So we're going to need a loop. I'll use a for loop. We're going to be counting. Well, what are we going to count? We're going to want to know the length of the string. And previously, we've seen that we can access individual characters in a string, starting at position 0, position 1, and so on. So we can use that information, the length of the string and the character positions, to print out the characters individually. All right, let's write a for loop to do that. Now, that's a little bit tricky, so it might take us a revision or two of the param to get it exactly right. Let's add a for loop to our program. For int i equals 0, i is less than name dot size i plus plus. And let's put some temporary code in here that we can use to test this. Name i and line. Save. We'll compile. Hello, what is your name? Steve. And there, notice I got the letters, one per line. All right, we're getting close. Now, one other thing that you'll see that I did here in this for loop, and you saw that I did on paper, is notice that here I'm actually declaring a new integer variable. I'm not using one that previously existed. This is very common to do that. And this variable i that I've created exists only in the context of the loop. So for example, if I try and output i here, and let's compile the program, notice here it says undeclared identifier i. That's because i doesn't exist here. It only exists inside of the, the loop. All right, well here, we printed out the characters with an end line after each one. Instead, let's print out a dash and then print an end line after we drop out of the loop. Compile and run. Hello, what is your name? Steve. And now look, we're really close, except we got one extra dash at the end. And that's because our loop happened once for each character in the string, and we printed a dash after each one. But we don't want to print a dash after the last character. Well, how are we going to fix that? What we could do over here is adjust our boundaries of the loop slightly. I'm going to subtract 1 and that's going to make uh, this loop stop one sooner. I'll run the param again, and I'll type in my name. And now we got the first four letters of my name followed by a dash. And now all I have to do is print out that last character. Okay, well let's add that. out name name dot size minus one remember if size is five then the positions in the string are zero one two three and four so if we take the size and subtract one that'll get us the position of the last character. Okay. Now we run the program. I've got the letters of my name with a dash in between each character. All right. Well, that concludes our first look at the for loop. One last thought. What would happen if the user doesn't enter their name and just hits enter when prompted? That'll be an issue that we'll deal with later on. All right, thank you.